the team head out of town to interview Matthew Reed to try to get to the bottom of his claims of lost time and alien abduction. My experience in 2009 changed everything. I don't have a lot of friends anyways. I have a few close friends. And how has it affected my life is how do I approach them and say, you know, hey, Bill, guess what? And, and I try to explain it to them. And then the minute you see that blank look in their face, that relationship is over. All I want is for people to see the evidence the facts and tell me I'm wrong. Hi, Hi. Mike Barra. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Good. Do you mind starting us off with a detailed explanation of sort of what happened to you? Um, Fred and I went to a movie. We left the movie theater. Um, it was a clear evening. I dropped him off, and I pulled out of his driveway and turned left, and that's when I saw an orange ball. It shot south, and so I turned south, and it was maybe 50 feet, 75 feet. My vehicle started to shake and shudder, and I noticed that the gauges were just jumping. Um, to the left, to the right, and I remember feathering the throttle, thinking it was going to stall. And literally the next thing I remember is being in the motion of getting back into my vehicle, and I had no idea where I was. I noticed I had a little bit of blood here in my mustache portion of it. It was dried up, it was, it was flaky, that's how I knew it was there. How did you feel at that moment? There was a sense of confusion. There was a, a bit of panic. I quickly had to assess where I was. What did you assess, if anything? This was completely out of my realm of control. So did you notice any other marks or uh, any pain about your body? I had noticed that I had two puncture wounds in my chest. Did you happen to get your any of these puncture marks looked at by anybody after the incident? After I sent those to my brother, he encouraged me to get a doctor to look at it. And he said he necessarily couldn't explain what they were. Yes, they were there. He did ask if I had recently had any radiation treatment because they kind of resembled a bit of um, bubbly tissue. Is there anything? that it happened to the car, had the, the uh, airbags <clears throat> gone off or anything like he'd been in an accident? The, the airbags didn't go off. There was several thousand dollars worth of damage to my vehicle that was found afterwards. The four-wheel drive relay was burned out. That was unexplained. So all, all that stuff's electrical, but there was no collision damage visible, no. visible on the vehicle? None whatsoever. Okay. After I contacted my brother, he had contacted a group that came out that conducted an investigation. They did find trace radiation on my vehicle. If you put a compass, on my vehicle. Originally, when they first came out, if you set it on the hood of the vehicle, the compass would spin. If you walked around the vehicle, the compass would also spin. Maureen and Stephen head with Matt to the location where he claims he saw the UFO. This is the first time Matt has returned to the scene since his abduction experience in 2009. What I want to do is take Matt on the exact same journey that he made from the cinema to the point of the abduction. You know, whatever happened is in there. It was recorded. So by getting him to relive the journey, he can relive the experience. Something happened in between here and the next location. What happened? It's the first time he's been back there, and he's starting to recall the events of that night. My memories are being in a craft. Do you, do you remember going into the craft? No. What's your first conscious memory of being in that craft? Just standing in a room, everything was out of focus. Only moments after, there was a triangular type object that was for coming from the ceiling. I could tell it was coming towards my head. And to me, that's where the panic started to set in. So then what happened next, Matthew? I don't remember anything else. 
when you came back you had a bloody nose. So that must have happened while you were on board the craft, but you have no memory. Don't have any memory of that. I knew it. Bringing Matt back here has really jogged his memory. It's hard for him to relive, I can understand that, but I do suspect he's got much more to tell. So Matt, we've just come from the location where you were taken. Um, how did that make you feel? To be back there it was one road that I have avoided. Well, the truth of it is, is it's... 2009 wasn't the first time that I was abducted. My brother and I were abducted in 1967, and the entire family was in 1969. Oh, my God. I was four. What happened? As I'm in the top bunk, I start seeing these flashes of light outside the window. And they got so bright, they were almost penetrating the walls. There was a hatch that went to a crawl space type attic, and the hatch started rattling. And I literally look off the bunk, and my brother is gone. It was just like 2009, I fade out and I'm in a craft. And my brother's there. So what you're saying is that it wasn't just you, it was your brother? We just had such a good life. It's all then. What about your relationship with Tom after this event? We just were very distant. We didn't communicate. The best way to describe it is, you know, growing up on the farm, a horse farm, it was the Norman Rockwell setting that my mom wanted for her children. And this just ripped it away. My contact experience has always been challenging, but on the whole, it's been positive. But that's not the case for Matt. He's having a really tough time. And he's just revealed to me that his brother Tom is also an abductee, and that's a breakthrough. And I think it's going to help us get to the bottom of these abduction cases here in Indiana. The following day, investigators Daryl and Stephen head out to meet Matt Reed's brother, Tom. They want to find out more about his alleged abduction and the effect it had on his family. I envisioned this Norman Rockwell upbringing, and it was anything but that. Over the years, we've, we've found a way to deal with it and, and put it on the back burner and block it out. But no matter how hard you try, you just can't do that. You really need to face it and, and hit it head on. And I think at this point in our life, it's time to do that. Investigator Daryl has personal and traumatic first-hand experience of family abduction. The aliens came after me when I was a little boy. And then they got my son. They come after families. This is how they operate. Tom, Pleasure. Stephen Jones. Steve, pleasure. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Well, thanks, Tom, for having us here today so we can talk to you. We believe that you, you had some experiences as, as a young boy. What happened in your events? I do remember laying on a table, and I do remember something coming over me. There were uh, these uh, figures off to the left, which brought my brother next to me. So I saw the two figures. They were standing right next to each other. One turned its head a little bit and swung over towards me. What did you see when he turned and looked at you? Just the face of this thing. It was really, it was really disturbing. Uh, I had never seen anything like that before. Do you have any sense at all that what they were there for? I did get a sense, and so did my brother, that we were there, there was a need from something from us, if that makes sense. Tom's brother, Matt, had strange puncture marks left on his body after the alleged abduction. Daryl wants to know if Tom had any physical marks left on him, too. Thomas, in any of your events, have you ever experienced uh, anything like uh, unusual cuts, scars, Missing tissue, anything like that whatsoever that you could not explain? I have uh, what many have referred to as a, 
on a scoop mark on my, my right arm. I don't remember a, a scab or anything. It was just one day it was there. You can actually feel this. A lot of skin missing there. You'd, you'd think you'd kind of notice that if uh, you had had a big chunk of skin taken out of you like that for that deeply. You would, you would think. Both brothers have revealed that they have physical scars left on them from their alleged abduction experiences. Daryl believes this is more than coincidence. The reason these events happen, in my view, is that the alien, whoever they are, they're looking for certain things, and they intend to do something with it. In my view, both Matt and his brother Tom have been abducted by aliens. I have a contact called Timothy Good, and he's an expert in this field. I believe by talking to him, he's going to be able to shed some light on what this is all about and explain why ETs are taking blood and tissue from human beings. So this new case that you've been investigating, is this the one where the young lady was cured of cancer? Yes, absolutely. Author Timothy Good has been investigating cases of abduction and alien harvesting for over 50 years, interviewing hundreds of eyewitnesses, as well as being leaked top secret government information. Now, Tim, the case that we're currently working on, two brothers, the Reed brothers, that have had missing time, puncture marks, tissue taken. Do you know of any other cases that are similar? Well, there's a, a case in 2002 involving Chris Augustin, who claims to have had missing time, strange marks, for example. He woke up with a triangular-shaped bruise, as you can see here. And there was also a series of puncture marks in a line here, which are interesting. Just like the Reed case. Those sort of marks, is that pretty typical of what contact experiences have on their body after an event? Certainly involving abductions. There have been many cases of triangular marks, circular marks, and other types of strange marks which are inexplicable. What other cases do you have that fit this? There's a famous case from 1957, Antonio Villas Boas, yeah. who was abducted, taken on board a craft. Puncture marks were also found on him, where they had perhaps taken blood samples from him, mm -hmm. according to this doctor here. So this is his doctor examining him after the event? There were actually two doctors who examined him in Brazil, and one of them was a friend of mine, a colleague, and uh, he was absolutely convinced this was a genuine case. With regards to all these cases, especially the Reed case, why is this tissue being taken? I would think something to do with DNA, because I have been reliably informed by a Washington source that there is a hybridization program in process. A group of aliens plan to produce hybrids, combination of human beings and their own beings. If what I've learned is true, there is an intention on the part of these hybridizing species to take over the planet. Wow. So Tim, is it possible that there are hybrids walking down the streets of this town today? Definitely. Do you think this hybrid program could possibly have benefits for the human race? Could this be the next stage in our evolution? Goodness knows what that could mean. Are we going to have thousands of, of aliens uh, in trying to be in charge of our planet? I don't know. Who knows about it? Does my prime minister know about it? Does the American president know about it? If there was one prime minister, I would say Margaret Thatcher, because she got to know Reagan very well, and Reagan himself had been briefed on the alien situation, and, and I'm quite sure that uh, he would have discussed it with, with Margaret Thatcher. There's no question that uh, a number of people have been very, very well informed. Why do you think certain parties would want to keep this secret? Because it's too shocking. What's shocking about it? What, the fact that there's a race of beings trying to take over this planet? Yeah. I think a lot of people would find that quite disturbing. After speaking with Timothy Good, I realised the experiences of the Reed brothers is not exclusive to them. They are being harvested for 
DNA, for blood, for tissue, and that is happening to thousands of people all around the world. The scariest thing for me is that people in our governments know about this. This goes right to the top. He said, Tim Good said that Maggie Thatcher knew about this, Ronald Reagan knew about this, and who knows about this now? The next day, the alien investigators head back to meet the Reed brothers to reveal their findings about harvesting and a possible government alien hybrid program. The fact that your experiences have come again after a gap of apparently 40 odd years, it would suggest that they may still be interested. There is something very, very special about your family that they're interested in. Any ideas what that is? I think it's to do with DNA. I think it is profoundly something to do with the future of humankind. Stephen Jones tells the brothers about the possibility of a human-alien hybrid species. Timothy Good told me that the ETs are using human DNA to produce a hybrid. And that's why they're interested in you. After nearly 40 years, the Reed brothers now have been given some answers as to what could have happened to them. Now all of a sudden, they're investigating it with like a microscope. It's frightening to see there's actual patterns that's occurring with our family history. All I wanted someone to do was just listen to me and just accept the facts. Because if you look at the facts, then you can't deny it. You can't deny something happened. 